Hey everyone, this is Gaurang Raje and in this video, we'll be looking at three assembly language programs for the AT51 microcontroller that use interrupts. Here we have the first program on screen and I've opened the debug session already. This program is for generating a square wave of 5 kHz frequency using timer and the timer interrupt. Since we have the output on the screen, we can directly check the frequency by setting the reference line and if we check the frequency, we get it as 5036 Hz, almost 5000 Hz. Now, let's get into the explanation for the program. If we see the program, we are doing the usual declarations here, ORG00H to set an origin for the program, then jumping to start label. We'll check this part afterwards. So, when we jump to the start label, we first declare our output pin for the square wave, which is in this case P1.0 or 0th pin of port 1 as OP. So, we are just declaring a label for the pin. Then, to use the timer 0 in mode 2, uh, which is the auto reload mode, we are moving data 0 to H to the T mod register. Then, we are moving data to the interrupt enable register in order to first enable all the interrupts and enable the interrupt for timer 0. So that we can do by moving the data 82H. Then we are setting a delay for the timer. For 5 kHz frequency, we get a delay of A4H for mode 2. And since this is the auto reload mode, we are moving that data to TH0. Then, to start the timer, we set the bit TR0. And here we only have a loop to count the delay. So to wait out the delay and then whenever an interrupt is generated from the timer, we will jump, sorry, we will directly go to the interrupt vector table whenever the interrupt is generated. So if we go to the interrupt vector table, we have written a script at the interrupt vector table's address of 00BH. This is the vector table address for timer 0 interrupt. So whenever timer 0 generates an interrupt, the program flow will be directly transferred to this point. Once we get the control here, we can write a script for complementing the output label pin, which is P1.0 again, and then using the RETI instruction to transfer the control back to the main program. Here, the RETI instruction returns to the main program as well as clears the interrupt. Now, we have our second interrupt program. In this program, we first need to generate a square wave of 5 kHz frequency just like the first one. But in addition to that, we also need to read the input at a port pin and then give corresponding output. This means that whatever input we read, at the input pin, we need to give the same signal at the output. So if we receive a 1, we will output a 1 and we, if we receive a 0, we will output a 0. So in this case, um, we can use the logic analyzer to give the output of two different pins. So if we do that, it will automatically split the output pin into two parts like this and in the top part, we will get a square wave just like the first program where we can verify the frequency. As you can see the frequency is again 5036 5, hertz which is 5 kilohertz. On the bottom part of this logic analyzer output screen we see that we have label out which we have defined in the program and here we get a high output. Now, we'll see about this a bit later. First, let's get to understand the program. 
the beginning of the program is same as the first one where we give an origin to the program and then jump to the start label. Again, we'll explore this part a bit later. So, um, now going to the start label, we first define all three pins that we are going to use and assign labels to them. We can use either EQU or bit assembler directive for that. So, assign port 1, pin 0 for the square wave generation, port 1, pin 4 for the output and port 1, pin 2 for the input. Here too, for the square wave generation, we will use timer 0 in mode 2, auto reload mode. For that, we transfer data 0 to H to the T mod register and enable the interrupts for the timer 0 using 82H data which is moved to the IE interrupt enable register. Then again the delay counter value will be the same which is A4H moved to TH0 and then we set the TR0 bit to start the counter. In here we will check for the input pin. So whenever the input pin receives a high value we will set the output pin as well and if the input pin is not set that is if we have a zero at the input pin we will skip the set b out step and then jump to the next instruction which is clear out so just in case if the out pin has a high value from before it will be cleared and again whenever an interrupt is received from the timer we will jump to the interrupt vector table address 000bh and we have a small script here to complement the status of the square wave pin p1.0 and then return to the main program again. Now for the out pin which we have on the logic analyzer first observation we can make is that it is currently by default in its high state that is we have value 1 at the out pin. This is because the out pin or out is reflecting the value of in and in is an input pin configured as an input. By default all input pins have the value 1 so by default we also have value 1 at out. Now to use the application of this in and out pin in simulation we can use the peripherals tab and open the IO port for pin P1.2 which is the input port. So now we have some default value at port 1 as we can see from the bits if we change the value of pin P1.2 it should be reflected in the out pin as well so if we click on the checkbox and disable it we shall get the output as we can see here the pin P1.4 has also changed its state accordingly it has not been reflected in the actual output because of lag but we can again change the state of pin 1.2 here and see the reflected change in the output pin. So similar change can be observed on the logic analyzer. Now here we have a third program where we have to do three operations. So first is generating a square wave of 5 kHz frequency which is as you can see on the screen here. The second will be same as the second program which is reflecting an input value on an output pin. So we have a second pane here for the output where the default value is set to 1 which is because of the input pin configuration. And the third operation will be to use external interrupt in this case external interrupt 1 to make an LED glow so whenever we get 
a value at the external interrupt pin, which is pin 3.3 in this case, the LED will glow. Now, however, since I can't show you the outputs, I'll explain. When we get a high value at the interrupt pin, which we can do in this simulation through the peripherals menu again, the input will be a logic level instead of an edge. Because of that, the ISR will be executed again and again even after the interrupt is cleared for some amount of time. This will result in generation of a square wave of very high frequency at this LED pin. So that being said, let's take a look at the actual program. So we can start the program normally. Only thing in the interrupt section, we declare two interrupts. One is for the new external interrupt one at 0013H IVT address using setB instruction and RETI and then and the second will be for the square wave generation using the timer interrupt at 000BH. Here we will just complement the label SQ which is declared for pin 1.0. In this case, the LED will be connected to pin 1.6. So we declare that with the LED label using the bit assembler directive. Then, as we do usually, we will move 0 to H in T mod register to set timer 0 in mode 2, auto reload mode. And in this case, we will move 86H to IE. 